as to how this potential sale, if successful, uh, will indeed build Packers War Chest for a, a move, its move on Echo Entertainment? Well, we know that the fight over Echo Entertainment has been building and we've already seen Crown with a 10% stake and uh, going to the regular to be a regulator to be able to increase that and we've also seen Genting emerging and through its subsidiaries and various enterprises holding about 9.7%. So no doubt that this sale will be an attractive proposition to uh, Packer. He should be able to get a good premium in terms of price and if we have a look at the price offered by News Corp today, $3.50, it's probably not going to be the final price. This is only a 14% premium to the last trader price, which is a small discount given that our News Corp is uh, going for full control of our consolidated media and probably closer to the $4 mark in my mind would be more appropriate for control of a strategic asset like consolidated media because if we have a look at consolidated media and the assets it holds, one of the most attractive assets it holds is that 25% stake in Foxtel. We know that the other 75% is owned by Telstra and News Corp. So this deal would see News Corporation moving to a 50% stake of Foxtel. Also, the other attractive asset is that 50% stake in Fox Sports. And News Corporation owns the other 50%. So they'd be moving to a 100% control of that Fox Sports channel. So altogether, it looks like a pretty attractive uh, proposition for News Corporation we know that the majority of its earnings comes from cable at the moment so entering into this space it probably be a it's a good strategic move the mark will most likely like it and of course news corporation has been in takeover overdrive uh, this morning also announcing that it's making an acquisition of business spectator the uh, business website for about 30 million dollars so a lot of excitement in that media space this morning and we are expecting to see other media companies being lifted by the news I'll go now but it's a long road ahead for QBE at these levels, is it still uh, at a discount enough to buy in? Moira, if we have a look at what drives QBE, such a large part of its business is around the U.S. and its investment po portfolio in U.S. Treasuries. So I guess the market, when it views QBE insurance, also views the outlook on the two of those. And if we have a look at U.S. Treasuries, they have been doing relatively well this year with yields at record lows and prices are hitting very high levels. But altogether, the question is how much higher can this go? And so I guess all eyes really on the FOMC meeting tonight, expectations building that we're going to see more quantitative easing we have a look at some of the expectations out there in the market. Goldman Sachs says that QE3 is their baseline scenario. We know that uh, Society Generale's economist has come out to say that he expects uh, QE3 in the order of about $600 billion. And we've seen Morgan Stanley putting an 80% chance on QE3 being announced at this meeting with a sum of up to $475 billion. Most investment houses just uh, are betting on Operation Twist at this stage, but of course, Operation Twist isn't seen as have, having had the same type of impact that uh, QE1 and QE2 have had. In fact, if we just have a look at copper prices and how it's been impacted by QE1, QE2 and Operation Twist, QE1 we saw copper prices up by 63%, QE2 we saw copper prices up by 12%, and Operation Twist we've seen copper prices down by 18%. We've seen the same type of reaction but not to the same extent in terms of the markets but unfortunately for the Australian share market we haven't really participated in a lot of the rally and that's because of the weakness in the US dollar meaning strength in the Aussie dollar which has been a big headwind for the Australian market and indeed overnight we saw the Aussie dollar hitting 102 US cents so that's one thing to watch for the Australian share market especially those companies making revenue offshore.